Hello, it's your friend Phil, Project Management Training Coach. Welcome to 40 Days to PMP and CAPM Exam Success. Our process today is from time management and it's sequence activities. Sequencing activities is all about putting activities in order, in the order that they will occur. As you can see in this example that I've got here, if you take a look at this side of the screen, you can see that I've got activities joined and you can see some names of people assigned to those activities. The activities look like bars in MS Project. They're blue, you can see that. And we also have the duration. A lot of times activities will be quantified duration-wise in minutes, sometimes in hours, sometimes in days. Okay. But really, the big thing about sequencing the activities is about putting them in the order that they will occur and also having some logic regarding what we call relationships. We could use different relationships when sequencing activities. There could be a relationship called a finish to start, for example, which means one task must finish before another starts. You look carefully on this side of the screen, you will see an example of this. So in this particular task, the recipe in this cake baking project, you can see that when recipe finishes, go to the store starts. We call that a finish to start relationship. The recipe task finishes and then the go to the store task starts. We can also see an example of something called a start-to-start -start relationship. So in the case of this one that Jerry has been assigned to, mix ingredients, you can see mix ingredients starts, and also at the same time, turning on the oven can start. Well, we've put a 60-minute lag in between these two. So turning on the oven is being driven by mixing the ingredients, mix ingredients, and that's a start-to-start with some lag. Hopefully this is bringing back thoughts from your training. If you have not done a 35 contact hour course and these concepts seem a bit new, I would highly recommend that you go through some training to understand what a lag is and what a lead is. Now these are kind of memory joggers and reminders and it's not meant to replace your 35 contact hour course. If you have not taken a 35 contact hour course, strongly advise go to praiseion.com and sign up. Okay, and then there's some other types of task. There's a task called uh, relationship, I beg your pardon, called finish to finish, and there's one called start to finish. I also talk about this in a video that I did a few weeks ago. I believe it was either early 2017 or late 2016, and that video goes into these relationship types, especially the start to finish, which throws people for a loop. So I would highly suggest that you look for that video, watch it, understand that relationship type. But the key thing that I'm trying to show you here are these relationships and how they would appear in a schedule and the fact that you can combine, as you can see here, leads and lag. So if you get into the exam and you come across questions that test you on relationship types as well as leads and lags, don't be surprised. Uh, you do need to know how to um, put the big picture of a project schedule network diagram together in your head or on paper to be able to glean um, certain information on the questions. Some of these can be an absolute time waste on the exam. Um, so I would say tread carefully how, how much time you apportion to answering complicated network diagram questions on the exam. Okay? You probably know the big thing here is the critical path. Again, I have lots of videos out there that teach the critical path. Um, make sure you watch those videos. Um, I'll not be talking about the critical path here, but you can find videos on the channel. All right, so let's have a graphical look at what exactly is happening as far as this process is concerned. Now, if you take a look at the process in question, sequence activities, you can see that sequence activities is fed a schedule management plan and the output you get from it is project schedule network diagrams. Now in addition to 
the schedule management plan going into sequence activities, the activity list will also be an input to this. We just don't show it in this particular test. So the activity list, the activity attributes, the milestone list, hey, they all go in here. And this is where you would use PDM, precedence diagramming method. You would also use dependency determination and leads and lags as tools and techniques of sequence activities. Very important to get a grasp of this process, which lays the land for the critical path method, which is talked about later on in the chapter. Okay. Go a few steps back here. So when you think about sequence activities, think about those relationship types. Finish to start. Start to start. Task A must start before B starts. Finish to finish. Task A must finish before B finishes. And last but not least, start to finish. Task B must start before task A finishes. And we call this a start to finish. So I hope you get the idea. Four relationship types. Also, very important for you to remember, are these, these dependency types. So mandatory dependency, what's that? Discretionary dependency. And what about an internal dependency and an external dependency? Know what these are, okay? Mandatory, what's another name for mandatory? Hard logic. What's another name for discretionary? Soft logic or preferred logic. So you could have a task or you could have um, a relationship that is, that is mandatory. You could have a dependency rather that's mandatory and internal or mandatory and external or discretionary and internal or discretionary and external. And just know that. Read it up in a PMBOK guide. Those are big, important, good for you to know. Also, preferential logic, soft logic, preferred logic, all that stuff. Know those definitions of what exactly they mean. That will definitely help you out on the exam. I would highly recommend, once again, that you take a look at the video that I have out there on uh, sequencing logic, uh, finish to start, start to finish, especially um, the critical path. Get familiar with that. And that pretty much is it for today. You know, you, you really have to put in the time, um, solve as many network diagrams as you can. Bear in mind that in addition to PDM, you also have ADM that you need to know, arrow diagramming method. Even though it may not be tested that much, it's still good to know that just in case you come across it. Also, what does it mean, G-E-R-T, GERT? not talking about Aunt Gert, but instead of Aunt Gert, think about the graphical evaluation and review technique. What does it mean? Okay. Read those up in your study guide if you've got one uh, that talks about this stuff. And look forward to talking to, to you tomorrow. Thanks very much. Speak to you then. Bye.